Cantrell Park. It's a park located in the heart of Kennesaw, and if you haven't been here before, you've got to go. It's a great place to be active, to spend time with friends and family, have fun, connect, and meet new people who love doing the same things that you do. It's funny, my wife has grown up in this area her entire life, so she's seen the progress of the park over the years. In fact, she says she remembers when the entire park was just fields. Since then, to her, it seems like there's always something new here, and that more and more people are showing up to experience this awesome park. In fact, the park's website even says that a large percentage of the park's patrons are not even residents of Kennesaw. People are willing to travel to experience Swift Cantrell Park. According to the park's website, Swift Cantrell Park is the city of Kennesaw's largest community park, boasting a 42-acre lot with a host of amenities that are scheduled to increase every year. They range from a 40,000-foot skate park to a 1.4 off-leash dog park as well. Okay, so how often do you come here? Well, this is actually my first time being here, bringing my dog, so. Okay, what's your reaction? How do you like um, it? It's very nice. I mean, I've been to a few other parks, like in the area, and um, it, they're not as nice as this. And there's a lot of dogs out today, so it was, I mean, it's perfect for her to get her energy out. <laughs> Swift Cantrell has playgrounds, picnic pavilions, workout stations, and walking trails, and there's plenty of space for expansion. Several committees have developed a master plan for the park that includes adding many new facilities such as a frisbee golf course, tennis courts, and even an aquatic center. Considering the time, effort, and resources that have gone into making this park what it is today, it's all the more interesting to examine how and in what way people choose to interact. You could work out at home, you could let your kids play in the backyard, you could watch a movie at home. And yet, people choose to go out and experience each other. To connect with each other. In a way, there's a loop that exists within this public space. That is, it exists because people utilize it, and people utilize it because it exists. If either part of that loop breaks down, then the whole network breaks down with it. If people did not want Swift Cantrell Park to exist, then it certainly would not have made it to the point that it's at today. And without the park's existence, people would find another way to satisfy those same internal desires. Perhaps that is another reason there are alternative networks. In urban areas where a park like Swift Cantrell is not available, online social media might create similar opportunities that satisfy those same internal desires. In a sense, it's similar to the way people go onto Facebook to connect, to share, and to interact. People go to this park to share stories and moments, to entertain themselves and others, to connect and make new friends, many of which are the same concepts that social media sites have adapted over time. Perhaps different personalities choose different avenues to satisfy the same desires, and perhaps this is the case for people who choose to visit parks like this one and Facebook users alike. To put it in Rickert's words, the hardware, the events, equipment, the landscape, and infrastructure that this public space offers creates opportunities for the software, the ambience, activities, emotions, and experiences to fill that space. Our networks and ecologies are what we make them, and we make these public spaces to satisfy the same internal desires, just sometimes using different mediums, different channels to connect, to be a part of something bigger. My name is Joshua Coates and this has been a public space documentary on Swift Cantrell Park. Thanks for watching.